but I can't. Before I knew they were, and I just froze. How is everyone doing? <laughs> Fair. Yeah. Fair. That kind of day. Yeah. A lot going. I feel you. Believe me. Semester. Right there. That kind of semester. <laughs> yes. That kind of semester. And it's that kind of semester, and we're only in like week four or something. Okay. Well, you were here. Relax. We want to tell you about the community outreach program. Introduce you to all the great things that we do through COP, and give you the process about how to apply and what the opportunities are. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, first, I will share uh, a couple of things. You go ahead with the next. There you go. I'm in your way. Okay. Doing our introductions. Um, my name is Mindy Levin. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I am the founder and director of Source and also a faculty member at the Bloomberg School of Public Health. I will introduce my partners in love. <laughs> Lydia. Hi, I'm Lydia Hickey. My pronouns are she, her, hers. Um, I am the assistant director of Source. Um, so Anytime you have application questions, anything like that, feel free to reach out to me directly, but I'll be supporting the COP program. Awesome. My name is Alyssa. I'm a fourth semester student here. I started as a student program assistant for COP back when I was a first semester. Um, and I'm really here just to support you guys when you start your um, positions and make sure you guys have friendly reminders to turn in like everything. And if you have any questions when you do start, you can always send them to me. Yes. So the three of us are your COP team and we're excited to get going and get people placed and out there working with our community partners as we uh, move forward here. Okay. So let me share a little bit about um, our work. The COP, the work that we do. Um, actually, let me do this. How many of you are first semester? Third semester? Okay. And then online people. We also had a lot of people that I know couldn't make it. So we're recording and we'll send a recording to everybody to say we have it. Let me go back. Uh, okay. So the work that we do is to prepare nurse leaders in public health nursing. I say that because this is not clinical. I promise you first semester people, and our fourth and third semester people can tell you, you will have plenty of clinical throughout your time at the School of Nursing. So we're doing public health nursing, and you're having an opportunity to have a long-term commitment to working with a particular community-based organization. This is a service learning experience, which means that we're going to be intimately involved with community-based organizations, responding to opportunities that they've identified. These are things that they say they are looking for students to support their particular work. So a little bit of introduction to COP. And I will say, we always say COP and not COP. So I just make that distinction, COP. Today, I want to tell you the, the, the what, where, how, when, blah, 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 all that good stuff, right, to get you introduced. So COP, what is it? We are a partnership between the School of Nursing, the Compass Center, and then you've got SOURCE, the Community Engagement and Service Learning Center, and we've got a bunch of different community-based organizations that are working with us this year, and then, of course, our nursing students that end up participating in COP. We are providing different types of health services to populations across Baltimore City, and really, you're going to have the opportunity to be committed to your community organization throughout the rest of fall semester. It's not the whole fall. We still have to get you applying and placed and onboarded. So it's like the rest of fall and spring. And there is, there is an option for you to continue into summer if you want to. Last year, I'd say a good number of people that continued into the summer for a little bit of our, of our group. Yeah. So it's an option. It's not a requirement. Okay. Um, and then, as I was saying before, these are really non-clinical. The only site that clinical is ever allowed to be a part of because you're overseen by a Hopkins School of Nursing faculty member is the Walled Community Nursing site. Everything else is not clinical. Okay, so I would also like to clear up any confusion that people have like, well, what is COP versus what is source? Come on in, come on in. Um, you're totally fine. Welcome, welcome. I'm going to give you the sign in sheet if you're out of register online. Yeah, and I'll pass it around. Um, so source, as you know, and like some of the first semester people, a little bit fresh in your mind from your orientation, um, we are the Community Engagement and Service Learning Center for all three health professional schools. So public health, nursing, and medicine. And we partner with those over 100 community-based organizations in Baltimore City. And we run a lot of programs. We show up in a lot of courses. So source is like your one-stop shop. 
Then we do all these different service learning and classes and activities. So COP is one of our special programs. So there's source, COP is one of our programs. I like to highlight it in particular to the nursing students because again, your long commitment and we have the opportunity to pay you for your time. You can ask me a question. Yeah, if we didn't get a chance to register, do it. Your name on that. Yeah, yeah, write it down, perfect. That's, I just wanna make sure that I can get you information and all that kind of good stuff. Okay, so moving forward, source again, we are, we have these hundred community-based organizations that we work with. Not all of them a part of COP, okay? So we have already worked with partners to identify what are the projects that are gonna be available to you all for COP this academic year. So there's um, a couple of different sites that are available. That's funky. Um, and you'll get a look at them, but I don't want you to like go on sources website and be like, oh, I wanna work at this organization for COP. Only the approved projects are in COP. Um, for those of you that did register in advance, you already potentially have seen the list because we sent it out and we'll reset it up. Those are the only ones. You did not choose your own adventure other than choosing which of those COP available job descriptions you are interested in, okay? And then as I mentioned before, this is a service learning experience. So this is not just like, I'm having a job to work in an organization. Um, I'm going out there and just doing service. If we don't bring this all back together in terms of understanding what it is that you're learning about your partners, what it is that you're learning about yourself, what it is that you're learning about being a nurse in the future and how this is all important, then we're not doing our jobs, right? Like this is meant to be an experience that we're learning from, with, and about one another and our community partners. So we do have these monthly times that we will come together and do some critical reflection, talk with one another, and it's fun. It's a nice like cohort-based program. Okay, so then the community outreach program, all of you for first semester people are taking the community outreach course. If you're third semester, you took that in your first semester. So that is a little bit of preparation where you're learning a bit about Baltimore and some of the assets and just a little bit of information before we just like send you out into the community. That's a part of what we look at as your preparation. Again, the program's open to students first semester, third semester. Once you are placed with an organization, that's your organization for the year. It's not like, oh, fall, I would do this, and then spring, I wouldn't do that, and summer, I want to do this. Part of it is because the organizations are also investing their time, energy, and effort in you. So it's like, yay, you're my person. Like, you really get to have that in-depth understanding, get to feel a part of the team at that organization, and can work on different projects and opportunities. So you make that commitment to that organization. The other thing that I like to really highlight is this is not your money maker. So if you need to have another job, that is an option for you. We are only able to fund you and pay you to work a maximum of four hours a week. That means sometimes you might only work two hours a week, or maybe you have like finals that week and you let your organization know in advance, I've got finals in two weeks and I can't come. You need to communicate that. But I say that to say, it's a, a bonus, a perk that we are able to pay you for that maximum four hours a week. Everybody earns $15 an hour. If you are eligible for federal work study, we can pay you that way. If you are not eligible for federal work study, it don't matter. This is just like the mechanisms that we pay people. It has no basis on how we make placements whatsoever. It's just a matter of how you get paid, okay? So COP students that have been working in the program over the past many years, I've been coordinating this program for more than 20 years, but in the last few years, post-COVID world, all those kind of things, some students might only be going on site to their organization two hours in a week or three hours, or again, like I said, if they're taking a break in a particular week because life, okay? but you're communicating that. Get the home out of this. Okay, so why should you do COP? Okay, as I was saying before, this really gives you that opportunity to have this long-term meaningful experience working with the organization Four hours a week is actually not a lot of time. It's about a half day or two, two hours, or there are gonna be times when you're looking at the job descriptions that like maybe you go on site to the organization for a couple hours and everything else you do in your pajamas at home, right? So like there's some hybrid options that are included in here as well. As I was saying at the beginning, some of you heard me say this, this is not clinical. We are doing public health nursing. So a lot of what you'll be seeing is health education, other forms of interacting with clients that is not like stethoscope and that kind of stuff on a person's body. A lot of case management, advocacy, community organizing are part of it. 
This is also a great opportunity. The students that have done COP over the years have talked about like the great mentorship that they've had from their sites. These are people in our community that really truly understand the population that have great history and experience. So you get to be embedded in that world with people that like have time for you, right? Have those experiences. You're sharing your talents. And then again, you're exploring Baltimore. Is anybody from Baltimore? Okay, so I'm, I might be the only Baltimorean. Again, you're learning about the city and learning more about a lot of the resources that are available too. So where are the COP placements? Again, some of you have had the sneak peek of what the different job descriptions are already. The vast majority of them, except for Wall, are, our, are from our source network of community-based organizations. When you have a chance to look through those job descriptions, you're gonna see that they're very, very different from one another in terms of populations they serve, the work that they're asking a student to do, um, you know, everything from like Amazing Grace Church is literally a couple blocks down the street, just like another block or two past the Northeast Market. And they have like a food ministry and they're getting people access to food and trying to build up some resources there. Um, the Baltimore Crisis Response Incorporated, Casa de Maryland, Esperanza Center. There's two positions that are looking for people that have either fully fluent in Spanish or French or have decent Spanish proficiency. So if you don't have that language skills, then you know that I don't have that skill set. It's not for me because I can't give them what they need. Okay. So there, there are some too that are in there that have that. Um, Food for Life is like on the outskirts of Patter of the Patterson Park. It's a school, Hampstead Hill Academy, that has a Food for Life program. It's working with young kids and teaching them about healthy nutrition and cooking. Super cool program. Um, Gallagher Services working with some adults that have different intellectual disabilities. We've got a hospice if people want to get trained to be hospice care. Jubilee Arts is working with youth-based opportunities. Maryland New Directions is some employment for adults in the city. Spark Center does a lot of harm reduction. It is over on the west side. And then the Wald Center is our one site that the Compass Center, the School of Nursing runs. And we have our own School of Nursing faculty members that run that site. It's the only place that any clinical might be an option, although it's still very limited clinical. It's just, you'd have some oversight if that comes up, okay? So these are the organizations this year. What you will see, what you will see when you review those job descriptions is that each of those sites will say, we're taking one student, we're taking two students, we're taking three students, we're taking four students. So while you're seeing, I don't know, it's 11, something like that, placements, we also have, there's more spaces than that. Those are just the ones that are available, okay? All right, let's keep on going. So those are the where. Then you also have when. So theoretically, or actually not even through, really, I opened up the application. Like when I sent out the email yesterday and like did reminders about today and gave you the job description, the link for the application is in there. We have that at the very end. We will email all of you that are here and signed in and everybody else that couldn't be here. So you have these links. So you can start to look right now. You can apply at this minute if you wanted to, but wait till I give you some tips. So the main thing to know is that you have to submit your COP application by Sunday, October 6th by 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, okay? So that application is open. Whenever you wanna fit it in, get it in to be considered for COP. After that October 6th deadline, we will work to basically, we have to like take all your applications, organize them, see who wants what. And then we actually will be doing a live draft of we're selecting students for different positions. So that following week, we'll have our live draft, select students, and shortly after, we will send emails to say what your placement is. So let's give the example, let's say it was the hospice, um, Gilchrist Hospice, that would take up to four. Whoever gets placed at Gilchrist, like you will all be emailed together, one, two, three, four, you are all the hospice folks. Here's your community partner to get started, and we give you a little bit of information. So we, we're trying to turn this around as quickly as possible so that way we can get your placement because there are a couple other steps before you can actually get started. Meaning we have to get you into payroll to be able to be an employee, to get you paid and able to be working out of the community. So we will also give you, again, after we have those announcements, we'll share like when we're gonna do a quick COP training and orientation. Similar to this, we'll do it live, but again, sometimes it's just hard to find a time that works for everybody. 
with everybody's busy schedules. So we'll still record it. And you can watch the recording to do the steps that you need. And then you're committing to serving the rest of the fall semester. And then the spring semester, the summer as an option. You can make that decision later on. Okay. All right, so how do I apply? Biggest thing right now is to say, review those job descriptions. Thoroughly review them. What are the skill sets they're looking for? Again, the easy example of like, you don't speak Spanish and they want somebody that's fluent, don't apply for that position. We also have in those job descriptions, like where the organizations are located, right? Some of them are super close by, like Amazing Grace Church, you can walk down the street. Wallet, you can walk down the street. Some of them might be like closer to where you're living or along like a Hopkins shuttle route, um, but they'll have all those details. But like, take a look. Like if you're like, I logistically cannot get to this particular organization, like the Spark Center is on the west side, closer to the University of Maryland. You can get there, but like you have to decide, can I get there? They're doing awesome harm reduction work, working with um, people in the communities. But again, like those are the logistics parts. Um, I think there's like one or two in there that has like pretty specific times. Um, for example, the Amazing Grace Church, they have programming that happens on two specific times on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They're like, as long as you have some overlap with at least one of those times, cool. But if you have no availability whatsoever, then it really won't work out. And also one of those times is like, if you, if you have a lunch break, I'm telling you, it's just a couple blocks down the street. You can pop in there. Then the, uh, the next thing you'll do is you'll do your application. With your application, again, you're first reading your job descriptions, but prioritizing for yourself which ones you're interested in and can get to, right? We allow within your application to select up to four different sites. So I don't want you to rank all 11. Ain't nobody doing all of those. Come on. But you can pick your top four sites that you're interested in. Now, the other part is there's just like some basic questions like who you are, what's your email, the basics, right? But then there's a couple of like open-ended questions to talk about your, your background and community engagement, some goals that you have for your future, as well as you need to write a, a personal statement. There's a little guiding question in the application for each of those positions. So for example, if you're saying, I'm really interested in Gallagher services, you've read the job description and you'll write like why you feel connected to Gallagher services. Maybe it's because of an experience you've had in the past, a skill set that you could bring to the table, or if there's something that connects to like your career goals. But you're going to slightly alter your personal statement for each of the projects you're applying for. So you're going to say this one thing about Gallagher. Then you're going to say something else a little bit different about Gilchrist. Then you're going to say something a little bit else about Spark. You, you are basically selling yourself for that project. Does that make sense? Okay. In your application, you can also, you'll tell us, are you going to get paid through federal work study? Do you want to volunteer? You don't have to get paid. Um, but if you want to get paid, we'll pay you. Um, or if you're not eligible for work study, just regular business office. The application link is here. We'll make sure you have it. And we also have it on the very last screen. So, um, okay. So you're going to submit your application. Then you're going to receive your placement. Then we're going to have COP orientation. Then you're also, we're going to see, pay me, not pay me. Most people get paid, so don't feel bad if you're wanting paid. Like, get that extra money. Again, you might decide I am taking a ride share to get to my site, and you can use that money for that. Use it for whatever you want. Put it in your pocket. Then you're committing to serving. You're doing a max of four hours a week. You're being accountable and committed to your placement site. And then, you know, making sure that you're in touch with your preceptor. And then you're also going to be in touch with the three of us. So Mindy, Lydia, and Alyssa. You're going to see emails from us. We're always going to say, please, 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 please copy all three of us. It just helps us communicate and coordinate better. And but like for the next two days, I'm going to be at a faculty retreat. So I have an out of office. And like, if you just emailed me, then maybe we wouldn't hear back. But if you emailed all three of us, Alyssa is going to jump and answer a question or Lydia will answer a question or Alyssa's in class, and so we'll email you. So just keep us all in the loop. So um, COP commitments. So one of the things that you will see when we do orientation is that we will give you a full list of commitments. It's basic stuff. We're not asking you for anything crazy. But again, one of the things that are going to happen, like you're going to apply through us. We're going to give you your placement. But to get you into actual payroll, we're going to tell you you have to submit your application and smile. We haven't opened that up yet. We do that after we place you. 
And it's just like literally basic, like put in your information. It's just for the purpose of like, that's how the School of Nursing runs all of their employment to get you into payroll. Let's collect some basic information from all of you. The one thing I do want to share about your employment at the School of Nursing. Is anybody already on payroll for other jobs? Okay. So there's some stuff that you won't have to do if you're already on payroll for other jobs. But for the majority of you, you're not on payroll for a job. One of the steps that HR requires for every student, faculty, staff, is that you're going to do what they call an I-9 documentation verification, which basically means you're going to have to bring in your original no copies, original documents. If you have your passport, passport is gold and it's still current. You can give your passport and they'll look at it and be like, okay, you're good to go. If you don't have your passport with you or if it's expired, then there's like a list of different documents that you can bring in. Like your driver's license, doesn't matter what state as long as it's valid and like a social security card or a birth certificate or whatever. And there's a list, we'll show you that list but it needs to be original. So you can't like ask somebody back home to like scan you a copy, but I'm telling you that now because that would be a holdup of getting you in if you don't have your original. So if you are going home or there's somebody back home that can send you any of these things, you're gonna need that to get into payroll. So that is a step. And when you get the like forms, when we go through this smile, you'll start getting these automatic emails fill out this, fill out that, and like the, you, you make an appointment to go and have your I-9 stuff looked at. When you did it, was it like across the street at the School of Public Health? Do you remember where you went? So you can, like, there's different sites that you can book, and one of them is going to be East Baltimore, and it's inside the School of Public Health. So if you're, they, you do it based on like an appointment, so you have to book like a 20-minute appointment, and then like, depending on how, like, fast you want it done. Um, there are other sites like at the Homewood campus too that you can do it. So that's only my like heads up, have those things, get those things if you don't already have it to make it move quicker. And the sooner you get that done, then your process are like, okay, you're in payroll. You can start working right away. Okay. Um, we will also tell you once you get that email that says you are the person or the people at this site, we're gonna give you about two weeks to reach out to your site, to introduce yourself. You know, they'll get information about who you are. But again, like just that basic, let me meet. You're not starting to work yet. You're just like making connection, making sure the times are gonna work and that kind of stuff. Technically, you really can't start working until you did that paperwork. There is no employer that's gonna be like, oh, well, sure, I'll pay you when you're not even an employee yet. So that's why we get to that paperwork like right away so we can get you on file. Um, and then we will do monthly mandatory COP sessions. Um, they are fun. They are interactive. We will talk with one another. Um, so we require everybody to come to those. Again, life happens. There might be a conflict. You might be sick. I hope not. We will give um, a makeup assignment for anybody that can't make it because things happen. And then at the very end of the year, we will do some sort of COP final impact event. We've done poster sessions last year. We had some craziness with the schedule, so we made these COP videos. There will be something that we do to final wrap it up. And you'll also be responsible for completing an end of COP program final evaluation to give us that feedback about being in the program and working with your sites. So those are the main commitments that we're talking about here. A um, couple of quick reminders before I take questions from you. If you are not already on our source weekly service scoop, that is our center's weekly newsletter that comes out every Tuesday. If you're not already getting that, you can email source at jhu.edu and just write subscribe and say you're a nursing student. We'll get you on that so you can see all the different announcements and opportunities and events. And if you don't already know, in one week, on Wednesday, September 25th, is our Source Community Involvement Fair. School Public Health is right there. Legit, come across the street. We're on the second floor. We've got a couple dozen community partners coming. Some of them are community partners that you're going to be applying to. Um, we also have a lot of really fun prizes and free ice cream. So make your way across the street, 12 to 2.30. We'll keep promoting it, but you want to be there. Okay. Um, and then I think I have maybe a couple more slides in here. Yes. So I want to do, let me look at time. We're going to show quick videos. Um, these are two of our students that were involved with COP last year. They're each like literally like a minute. Um, so let's start with one, one video first and we'll 
Hi, my name is Cameron and I'm a hospice companion at Gilchrist Hospice. Um, some of my responsibilities at Gilchrist Hospice include um, providing emotional support to clients and I think being able to do that has allowed me to grow pers personally and professionally a lot in that area, especially because with nursing it's a lot of um, patient care and you know a lot of one-to-one -one with your patients. So being able to connect with your patients and talk to them on a more intimate level, I feel like has, or this site has allowed me to do just that. And also it's allowed me to get to know the Baltimore community a lot better and to get to talk to some of the members of the community and understand better the needs that need to be served and addressed here in Baltimore. And other students should consider applying for COP in the future because it is a great way to know Baltimore and understand needs that need to be addressed. So Cameron worked at... Uh... Hi, my name is Liz. Mm -hmm. I worked with Hampstead Hill Academy the past two semesters with kindergarten through eighth grade students through their Food for Life program on Tuesdays. Food for Life is a program that the school offers where they introduce kids to healthy foods that they might have not tried in the past, and they also teach them cooking skills throughout their kindergarten through eighth grade journey. I personally think that this program is very important because having cooking skills is an invaluable experience and also learning to try um, healthy foods that the kids might have otherwise not tried before. Learning to cook for yourself is good for community, self-care, and independence for the kids. Uh, the most unique part of this experience for me was watching the kids try a new food or a new skill that they might have not previously tried, pushing themselves outside of their comfort zone and walking away smiling, feeling accomplished. So we've got a couple of these different clips and students talking about their experiences and they're all as unique as the different positions um, that you'll see available online. So just a little hearing from a couple of people. And I invite you all to join us and participate in COP. I know, again, a lot of you were first semester from the people that went first semester. Okay. Um, I know people get scared about like, oh, I'm going to make a commitment to something. I'm busy. I'm, I'm actually getting some good head nods. No, I'm not. Okay, good. So again, it's a max of four hours a week. That doesn't mean it's four hours a week every week. You're going to be working with people. Your preceptors are people. They are understanding and compassionate. What that means is your accountability to them is talking about your needs and your experiences, your expectations. So if you know in advance that you have finals, if you know in advance you're going to be out of town because your best friend's getting married and you're not missing it, just let them know that you're not going to be there that day. And potentially you can reschedule for a different time. Okay, so that's, again, treat it like a job and talking with your organization. And then you're also gonna be constantly talking with Lydia, Alyssa, and myself as we go throughout the program. Um, there might be one or two slides left. I think that could be the very end. Oh, the app, yes. So we'll make sure you have this um, link as well to be able to submit your application. Um, but at this point, like that's the information. We wanna make sure we have all your emails so that you get the job descriptions. The descriptions are also in the application. Like when you go to the application, it's like, click here, you look at all the different descriptions. Um, we used to have, like the School of Nursing has an intranet that you have to log into that we had used forever. No offense, School of Nursing, shh, I hate it. Uh, it's really not easy to use and you all aren't really using it for other things. We were always having trained people how to do it. I'm like, you know what, forget it. I'm just sending you the email. We're putting it in the, in the survey. I don't need you to log in somewhere else. One of the things that we will be using when you all are placed is there is a platform called Hopkins Engage. And Hopkins Engage is the university's online community engagement platform. Once we make everybody's placements, we will have a group in Hopkins Engage that's like COP 2024, 2025. We'll give you instructions. We'll do this during orientation about how you submit your timesheet. Your timesheet is just a tool that gets you paid. That is it. We use Hopkins Engage for you to submit your impacts. And what that means is your hours, your activities, what you're doing. There's gonna be times at your organizations where the work that you're doing that week might be like behind the scenes administrative. And other days that like you're working in hospice and you were directly working with three or four different people. 
or you're at Food for Life and you taught a class of 22 kindergarten students. So we collect that information about those direct impacts um, and connections you have with people. And at the end of the year, we get all kinds of fabulous data that is great for source. It's great for Compass, the School of Nursing. There's things that go up to the university. And then there's also information that we give back to our partners for them to know who's done what, where, why, how to measure our, our impacts. What questions can we answer for all of you about COP? Yeah. Um, so for the applications, if you're altering the statements, depending on which organization, is that all within one yep. application? So is there yep. just like separate areas to? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So exactly. When you get to that question, mm -hmm. and it'll be very clear, like if you're only, because you, again, let me say this too, because I don't think I said this. When you're reviewing those job descriptions, if you legit, legit only see one position that you want, there's nothing else in there. There's one, only one. That's fine. You'll only have one statement. You'll see in the in the application, it'll be like, what's your first choice? And then what's your second choice? And even second choice, you could say, I'm not picking anything else. What's your third choice? I'm not picking anything else, or here's my third choice. What's your fourth choice? Pick your option or say, I'm not picking anything. Now, let me say this. I really, really suck at knowing which is going to be the popular project from year to year. I really do. I'm like, oh my God, I want to do this. And then it's like, the one that has the least amount of people interested. I'm like, I, I guess I'm just, I'm not with it. And there's something that I personally am like not as excited about, like everybody wants that one. So if you're only picking one, you are limiting your chances of having a placement. And let's say you're picking one and you see they're only taking one student and like 15 of you want it, but only one person's gonna get that placement. So I always do say, really look at, can you get there? Are you interested? Do you have the skills? Expand your horizons. But if you really only have one, like I don't want you to put something down that you'd be like, um, I really don't want that one. If you don't want it, don't put it down. But if you're only giving one, you could potentially be like setting yourself up for no placement. I will say this, um, over the many years that we've run the program, we've had a really high success rate of getting people placed. The people that don't get placed tend to be people that have not really done a good job on your application, like telling us you are like, I, I don't know you all yet. I will know you as we work together throughout the year, but right now you're just a name on a paper. I don't know who you are. So you're selling yourself. But if you're only giving one and it's the one that will only take one and everybody wants it, it's highly competitive versus if you're spreading yourself, it increases your odds of your placement. Okay. But do think about your first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice. You don't have to pick them all, but that's just a little bit of tip. When you get to that question about personal statement, it'll be like, you're putting one paragraph if it's one, two paragraph if it's two. It'll, it'll make sense. Yeah. Okay. And if you're ever like in the Qualtrics, I know, like, oh, this doesn't make sense. Like, holler at us. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. That's what we're here to help you out. Yeah. What else can we answer for you? Anybody already started looking at those job descriptions? Yeah. Okay. Okay. There's some good stuff. Some things like, I want to do that every day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cool. All right. Well, um, yeah, we can stop. We can took that down. I don't know if we have anybody still online. Heard some hanging up. Anyway, you have all the information, including our contact information. Reach out if you have questions, but make sure you find time to get your application in so we can review you, get you placed, get going, and start having you doing some work. You are not required to work over winter break. You have a nice winter break. If you were happen to find yourself back in Baltimore for any portion of that, you may work up to four hours a week over that time. When we get later in the spring is when we'll figure out, like, do you want to keep working into the spring? Some of them will give you options. Like, for example, Food for Life at Hampstead Hill. Like, once school is out of session, they're done. And the teacher's on break, too. Yeah. So there are options and some choices that you can make at a later time. All right. Thank Thanks, everybody. Thank Thanks for coming. Thank for those of you viewing online, we look forward to reviewing your applications too. Thank you.
Yes, we think in the case of the one that Mindy was mentioning for amazing groups, they have like two windows where they're asking to work on a So I think if you're scheduled changes, there's still some likelihood that with the windows that they've offered, you can find some overlap. But I think that that would be part of communicating with the site. 